Okay, so you had to do a bunch of different questions, modeling questions, it's exciting stuff. Besides the stock, we'll do that one in a minute. Um, what were, how were the other questions? How were they? I did it with one of my friends and she Okay, you did it with one of your friends? Explain it to okay. me that it didn't get everything. Anybody have a specific question that you've distilled from your discussion with your partner? Any specific questions? What is that all? No questions? So you ready to move on? You oh, totally no, understand it? Number 10. Hanley, can you pass that to me? Can you pass the pack to me? 10. Actually, I have it right here. Sorry. Number 10. This is homework 3. Oh, don't have it here. Number 10. Let me just... Can I see the packet? Yeah, sorry. Number 10. It says, the manager of a furniture factory finds that it costs $200 to manufacture 100 chairs in one day and 4800 to produce 30, 300 chairs in one day. So, what's your specific question, Hanley? Um, so, one point is 100, 2200. And what's the other point? 300, 4800. Right? And X represents number of chairs produced. And this represents cost. Express, express the cost as a function of the number of chairs produced, Express uh, assuming that it is linear, then sketch the graph. Express the cost as a function of the number of chairs produced. Okay, so... so I'm writing the equation. Yeah, okay. the equation between these two, yeah. So 4,800, you need the slope first. 4,800 minus what? Uh, minus 2, 2, 0. Over? Uh, over 3, It's going to be 26 over 2. Yeah. So it, the slope is? Uh, 13. So you have... 13x. You can do 13x, so you can do y minus 2,200 is equal to m, m which is in this case... 13 times x minus 100. So then you could graph that. So the function, this, so if we call that, if this was the x value and that was the y value is what I'm saying. What is the slope of the graph? What's the slope? 13. 13. What does the slope represent? Um, Macy. Yeah, for every one more chair you produce in a day, it costs you... Thirteen dollars. That's very good. For every one chair you produce, thirteen dollars to produce that one chair. Each chair equals thirteen to produce. Okay. Then part C says, what is the y-intercept of the graph and what does it represent? So how do you find the y-intercept of this function? Nope. Stop it. Stop doing that. Stop it. You could do it that way. I don't like it though. The y-intercept occurs when, yeah, so y-int is when x equals 0. So y minus 2200 equals 13 times negative 100. So that's y is equal to negative 1300 plus 2200. So what does that equal? 900. 900. What does that represent? Yeah, may say again. Yeah, startup fee. It's kind of like it's like if I'm gonna make ten t-shirts. If I'm gonna make t-shirts, it's fifty dollars plus five dollars per t-shirt. Can I say that these are materials? It's not the materials. No, it's not the materials. Gather material, you need the cost. Not directly though. What I'm it's not directly the cost. It could it could be part of it, but the idea is it's the, it's the starting cost. The thirteen dollars is what it, you could think of that as the cost per. I I, I said that is the manufacturing part. Yes, but let's say I want that this this function works all the way up to a million shares. So does it cost nine hundred dollars for the material for a million shares? Does it cost nine hundred dollars for the material for ten shares? No. The, the, if this was if this in, if this included the materials, it would have to be the materials for all of the chairs you're going to produce. Do you understand what I'm saying? It could be partially. It could be some of it, like maybe some of the ink. But the idea is this does not contain all of the materials for all of the chairs you're going to produce. For example, if, it's, if you're going to produce if you're going to produce one chair in one day, what would it cost you by this model? Is it like a phone Nine hundred and thirteen dollars <laughs> to produce one chair. It would cost nine hundred and thirteen dollars to produce two chairs. It would cost 
926. So does the $900 represent how much it costs for the material for the chair? It might be a little bit of it, but not all of it in this case. And if you needed a million chairs, is it $900 for the material for a million chairs? No. No, but it would cost you $13,900,000 to do that, right? So you can think of it as the startup fee. Like, what does it cost to, like, rent the machine, you know? Like, if I'm going to, what's something you could rent uh, and then use? Uh, a a what? Machine? A building, yeah. You could say something that uses material, like, I don't know, uh, there's, these insul there's, these, there's this kind of insulation you can put in your basement where you, you, you spray foam it. And that it co the material costs a certain amount, but to rent the machine costs a certain amount. So the rental is like, you know, $200 for the rental plus $50 per wall. It's a starting fee. Any other questions from uh, the packet besides the stock modeling? Yes, Justin, what number? Um, number 9B. Number 9B. I like being specific. Number 9B, the second one. I'm looking at it. Okay. What does the slope of the graph represent? Biologists have noticed that the chirping rates of crickets of a certain species are related to temperature, and the relationship appears to be very nearly linear. A cricket produces 113 chirps uh, at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 173 chirps at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, is that the proper? Is that the good order? Should I should I keep it 113 comma 70 or should I reverse it? The what? Yeah, I would reverse it too because in general time is the x-axis and temperature would be because you're modeling chirps. Like what you want to know about is the chirps. Is what you want to know about the temperature? Not generally, but you could. I mean, either way, um, I just by default I like putting temperature as uh, the x-axis. So one point is 70 comma. 113, and that's degrees degrees Fahrenheit, and this is chirps. Does it, functionally, can you do it either way? Yes. yes. And at 80, what is it? 173. So B says, what is the slope of the graph? Well, first of all, what is the slope of the graph? You go 173 minus over, which is going to be 6. So what does that, and it's, is that positive or negative? Positive. So the chirping rate, what does it represent? Chirping rate increases at 6 more per minute per what? Per degree Fahrenheit. So the chirping rate increases by 6 per minute every time the degree Fahrenheit goes up by 6. If you are using seven, if you're using temperature at the y axis, yes. what, what is the meaning of the representation of one sixth? One sixth, it would mean that um, uh, for, every <laughs> uh, for every one more chirp per minute, the temperature increases by what? Yeah. What seems to be more useful? Which one? The first one. The first one. This seems like a better way to write it. So let's let's just go with this one right here. I like that. And this is kind of neat because then you could, if you counted the number of chirps per minute of a cricket, you might you could maybe predict what temperature. temperature. What's can you give me a chat? What's the challenge of counting the number of chirps per minute of a cricket? There might be a lot of crickets, unless you know, unless you're sitting there looking at the cricket, right? If you're just going outside, is it kind of hard to hear one cricket? Why it is, it is the same if you reverse it. Here you reverse that y axis and x axis, and you have this degree of temperature. It doesn't. Because he's actually finding really that models the temperature of the number of seconds per minute, and so. Yes. Yeah, but. I don't understand your question. We could call the x-axis the pony axis and the y-axis the glasses axis. It doesn't matter what we label them. We could draw it upside down, backwards, underwater. It's, it still models what's going on. You can still receive, you can still get answers out of it. You just need to carefully label what you're doing. If you switch the axis, it doesn't matter in terms of model, but there's one that's going to be, for example, we, we use x on this axis and y right here. Why do we do that? Does it matter? Could, could it, like, why do we say x and why do we say y? No, I'm serious. Why? <laughs> but why? <laughs> why did we... Someone started someone it. Someone started it that way, and then everybody started using it. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Could you reverse it? Sure. Which one are they asking for specifically, though? Which one... What is... Uh, express this... Express... Uh, 
What number would nine? I find a linear equation that models the temperature as a function of the number of chirps per minute. Temperature. Temperature as a number of chirps per minute. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. Find the linear function that represents yeah, the models the temperature as the function of the number of chirps per minute n. So you want to model temperature and n. Temperature in terms of n. So what would our function be? The temperature is What is it? Can you write it as give me a point give me a slope intercept form. Or what did you say? We can convert it. It's fine. Temperature is what? Or just temperature is what? You can do it that way. Okay, temperature is the number of chirps. Yep. 307 divided by what? So you ended up with temperature is 1 sixth n plus 307 over n, over 6, like that. OK. So that's one way to represent it. You can reverse it, and you will be able to answer the final question. Both are accurate models. Do you understand there's more than one way to write a function? Yes? No? Maybe so? Yes. You can write it many different ways. This is the temperature in terms of the number of chirps per minute. Is that the function? I mean, the graph, um, the, the, the equation? Yes. But how do you get 307? How did we get 307? Well, um, I'm not, a, I don't know if it's correct, but I agree that the that, that is correct. How did we get that? Um, you do you, you y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and then you solve. Oh. OK, any last questions on this before we move on? Because I thought that if you, that model is Modeling Google and Apple stock. What did you come up with? Can someone give me one interesting thing they found? One interest. I'll just start calling in you at random. B block. Here we go. Uh, Steven, what's one thing? Uh, I noticed that the Google stocks started out pretty small, but over the course of a few years, jumped up really high. Started small, That's the same got thing. big. Yes. They had a pretty big fall in between. Big fall? Yeah. Like from 2008 to 2009. They're bo ball ball of them, both of them? Yeah, both of them fall in No, but um, Google, like, rises always and then fell from between 2008 and 2009. Okay, so it's 8, 9, it falls? Yeah. Got big, then fall. Well, I'll write it separately. Apple rebounded. Rebounded what? That rebounded. Rebounded faster? So Google has, is, isn't as high as it once was? Is that what you're saying? But I need you to be specific with your wording. Um, Apple um, exceeded its previous high mark, while Google did not want to be that. So is Google higher than it once was, or has it, ever, has it gotten past that? Um, yes. Google past that right is, Google, is Google stock presently its highest it's ever been, or is it higher at some point in the past? Now yep. Is, um, and when when was his highest point? Before 08 or after 08? Um, so Google has never recovered to where it once was. Um, Hold on, let me write this down. Never fully recovered. This is from the 08, the 08, 09. Okay. What's something else? Were you gonna say something, Covert? What do you mean dropped lower? They dropped lower, sure, but what does that tell you? You sure? Just because it dropped lower doesn't mean it's doing better or worse. How much were they worth before the fall, though? What was Google before they fell? What was Apple before it fell? Do you see what I'm saying? 
So like, at, let's say Apple, let's say Apple was worth half of what Google was at the time, but Apple went down five percent and Google went down sixty percent, like forty percent. Google would still be higher, but they fell forty percent. Apple fell five. So, what's one thing you have to be very careful of when you're analyzing these drops and these rises? Numbers. Can you be more specific? Um, like, I don't know how to explain, but, but the Google is more likely above three hundred and fifty, and Apple's, I mean, I mean the close thing, is, is mostly above one hundred and fifty. So they're like two hundred. Okay, I'll be more. I'll be more specific. When you say things like there was a big drop, or there was a big fall, what do you need to be careful of looking at if you're looking at one company? If you're okay, if you're trying to compare two company, what percentage fall, percentage increase, and decrease? You actually see this all the time. When do you see this? Have you ever seen stock prices ever? No. You've never ever seen stock prices. So you've never watched television or the movies ever. You ever seen stock tickers go by? Like those numbers flying by? You've seen them. I'm not asking if you understand them. I'm saying you, you, you've seen them. Yeah. What numbers do you generally see? What's the most common thing you see? Around you you see like up and down arrows, right? Yeah. yeah. What's a, yeah, Dow up. Or, okay, that's, that's the overall index, right? You see like Apple up like 1.2. What does that mean? Increases 1.2%. Percent. Percent, right? So when you see the increases, do they say, you know, it increased by... Fifty-eight dollars per share. Well, sometimes, but what's more important for the people who are looking? What's a, a more a more uh, a powerful number to work with? Percent. Percent increase and decrease. Exactly. Now, what about modeling? In terms of modeling, what did you see? Can you make any predictions? Can you <laughs> modeling hard? <laughs> yes. Modeling stock is very, very hard. Did you tr what did you try looking at when you when you tried to model? What did you try looking at? I just plotted. Okay, you need to be more. But you plotted what? What did you plot? What did you plot? Two times a year, and tried that. All over the place. What else did people try to plot? What did you look at when you? January of each year. January of each year, okay. Can you make any predictions? You can't really draw a line. Okay, can't draw a line. You I mean doesn't okay, li stock generally not linear, we've determined, right? Doesn't look like stock is linear. No. Google is more cricket, like Google is more I like that. That is a good way to say <laughs> Google <laughs> is more crooked. I like that. And Apple is more like steady. Apple is more steady, yes. That's I like that. More steady. Now, I guess here's a question for you. So when you analyze stock, when people analyze stock, they're analyzing it why? They want to know what? What's a basic when question? Buy when to buy and sell or if to buy and sell, right? So from what you've looked at, from what you've looked at, if you had to put money into a company, so far, you've looked at this, Think about this for a second. Where would you put your money? Don't say it out loud. Where would you would you put money into Google or would you put money into Apple? If you had to pick one, okay. Don't say it out. Oh, it's amazing. That was six seconds ago. I said don't say it out loud. Lasted less than five. Uh, ten seconds. <laughs> okay. Where would you put your money and why? Who would put it in Apple? Who would put their money in Apple? Okay. Yeah, you can say it now. Yeah, this isn't a trick question. What about Google? Okay, ready? Put your hands down. This is, we're going to pretend this is in America. You have to vote, okay? Pick one. You have a million dollars, and you have to put it all into Google or all into Apple. Who's going to put it into Apple? Let's see. Who's going to put it into Google? Okay, why are you going to put it into Apple? Someone tell me. Why are you going to put it into Apple? Mason. Seems more consistent. Okay, why are you going to put it into Google? <laughs> Ah, yeah, so you have to associate, you have to uh, take a look at your risk, fa risk factors. It looks like you might be able to gain more at a slightly higher risk. Another point I'd like to make when you're considering this, are you just looking at the value of a stock when you're deciding whether to put money into the company? No, what do people do? They don't just look at numbers, they look at what else? 
trends, but besides looking at numbers, what do people look at when they're deciding whether to invest in a company? The company itself, right? Like, is it a good company? Potential. Potential. And is there more to a company's potential than the numbers? Sure. What do people like to read all the time? What's our, what, what publication do people focus on when they're looking? The Wall Street Journal, right? Wall Street Journal. They look at what the health of companies is like. Um, and they use that information to predict future health. So if they know something, maybe a product is coming out, that might drive pro prices up. So what happened to Verizon stock when they announced that their iPhone is going to be covered, uh, carried on Verizon? Significant jump. Significant jump. Had they actually produced anything new yet? No. Had they actually sold anything new yet? No. Information, complete, in just information, what did it do? <laughs> Drove their stock up. So is it a really, really complex thing to analyze stock? Absolutely. It's really hard. Really, really, really hard. Okay, let's pause for a sec. Okay, so let's go back to Facebook is not public. You can put money in. They can, people can invest into Facebook, but if they have more than 500 people in here, they have to go public. So uh, with 500, $450 million from the firm and 500, $50 million from a Russian investor, they invested a total of $500 million. They created the agreement so that it, it's Legally, two, two entities are investing, the financial firm and the Russian guy, two. But inside the financial firm, what are they going to do? They're going to let people inve like invest in that share that the company holds. So to the SEC, it's still just two entities. But how many people, oh, there's people inside that company that can basically have their own private stock market for this company. Dirty. Um, the problem, though, is um, Facebook has to go public soon because they will, um, what triggers it? By April, by next April, they're going to be forced to because they're going to pass the 500 no matter what. I forget what it is exactly. Also, uh, why is Facebook popular? No, that's who make uses it. Why? What's the key to Facebook? Commu transparent communication. Okay, so if the company that is founded on transparent communication won't be transparent themselves, is that a slight contradiction? That's, um, that will be influenced uh, the people that are using it. Exactly. That, it will influence people that are using it. So if the company that builds itself on sharing your information isn't sharing their information, does that seem a little weird? Mm -hmm. Slightly. Okay, so I have this for you. These pictures, they're pretty neat. We have power functions. We have a linear function. We have a square. We have a cube. We have a fourth degree, and we have a fifth degree. Could you get the, the light? What, first power, second power, third power. They, what's the one common thing about all these graphs? All of them do what? They, are symmet they all have symmetry. Even functions, odd functions, that's true. But what else? There's one other common thing, yeah. They all increase right to the y-axis. I like them. Don't go yet. I have to go show you two more pictures. They also all go through the... Origin. origin, that's right. They all go through the origin. All the even functions all go through the point one one. What's one to the fourth? One. One. What's one to the tenth? One. One. What's negative one to the tenth? One. One. Ah. All the odd functions go through one one and negative. negative one one. What changes though? They change how steep they are. That's it. There's some other functions I'd like you to take a look at in your notes. They'll be there. And then last thing I want you to look at is this. Generally speaking, B would be A. What, do you call, what kind of relationship do you think that is? Yeah. A linear. Linear. What does this look like? Is that a linear function? No. Maybe a quadratic or, or an exponential. Or what about this one? Sine. 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 And this one, I want you to read about. Your homework tonight, your homework tonight is going to be the classwork and this right here. It's not, the mechanics are nothing new. You're just going to be using different function types to do your modeling. You're just going to be using different function types to do your modeling. That's it. When they say trig models, we're going to be focusing on sign, but that's the homework right there. But why there's two homework pack? Oh, homework pack number three. Oh, right. Got it?